For a musician, personality and music are two things that are inseparable. Whether it's legends like David Bowie shaking bread into his core by boldly coming out of the closet, or critics calling Elvis vulgar for blatantly shaking his pelvis on stage. How an artist portrays himself to their audience can sometimes be a vital aspect to their success, and it's something that can either make or break their career. And how much freedom they have to change that perspective can sometimes be a battle that lasts their whole life. But I think very few musicians are put in the predicament that Vocaloid producers are. In one light, Vocaloid could be seen as a godsend for young independent artists. Anyone with a computer and a vocal bank software can now suddenly share their music to an audience of millions of people, and gain opportunities that were impossible for artists in prior generations. But in another light, it almost seems like a deal with the devil. Because by choosing to take this path, to use an artificial voice instead of your own, to hide your identity to maintain the aesthetic of this scene, there is a certain level of anonymity and distance that is unintentionally created between you and your audience. And while that success at first of finally finding an audience might be exciting for people, I think there's a sense of isolation or dissatisfaction that comes with it over time. And that might be one of the many reasons why you see so many producers leave after they gain a large enough following. They want an opportunity where they can be in the spotlight themselves. But there's one producer who continues to defy that expectation for me. A producer that's somehow outgrown the scene he started in without ever even leaving it. And that's Pinocchio P. Pinocchio P is one of those producers where even if you haven't listened to him, you still know who he is. He's a legend. The thing is though, what has Pinocchio P done to constitute this fame or success? Don't get me wrong, Slow Motion was a wildly successful song when it came out, but as popular as something like Tell Your World or Miku Miku Nishite Rageru, when you get technical about it, someone like Nabuna had a much more substantial number of hits over the course of his career, yet for me, it would make more sense for a beginner to recognize Pinocchio P before someone like Nabuna. So why is that? I think a large reason for this comes down to how unique Pinocchio P's mindset is compared to his counterparts. While producers like Nabuna and Hachi showed an immediate fascination with Vocaloid when they first encountered it, Pinocchio P did not. The idea of having to write and produce songs from the perspective of an idol was something that highly disinterested him. In fact, when he finally did join Nico Nico, he decided to stream games instead. This mindset wasn't uncommon either. If you see my Melt video, you know Vocaloid went through another similar situation back in 2007. And this is why Melt would end up becoming such a large deal when it dropped. Because now artists could push their music in a direction where they could freely express or say what they want. Still, this wasn't enough. While its true progress had been made, the idea of having the vocal band coming first was still key. When you look at songs like Last Night Goodnight or The Disappearance of Hatsune Miku, do you genuinely see the producers who wrote these songs, or do you see the vocal bank associated with it? For Pinocchio P, this simply wasn't enough to attract him. Vocaloid had to present itself in a way where he thought he could take full control of what he was making, and that opportunity would come with Double Lariat. Agawa Niki P is a producer that very few people still think about today, and I think that's unfortunate. He was one of the first producers who was truly able to express himself in his music too. When you listen or watch the music videos for songs like Double Lariat, Yokota Sex, and No Sense of Direction, you don't really see the vocal banks who sung these songs, instead you saw Agua Aniki P, whether you liked it or not. And this was largely because Agua Aniki P was extremely consistent not only in his art style, but also his writing. Is there a shock value nature associated to some of his work? I mean... maybe. But the fact that he wasn't afraid to blatantly express himself in his music helped muddy the line between the producer in the Vocaloid, where the vocal bank is merely serving as a persona for the author. It's not merely a coincidence that Double Lariat is the song that got Pinocchio P in the Vocaloid. I think a large part of how Pinocchio P became such a large entity is that he portrayed himself in a very similar matter. To start, art and music always went hand in hand for him. Heck, posting gag mung on the internet is how he got introduced to Vocaloid in the first place. And if you know me, you know I love producers who can make their own art because I think there's a much stronger connection between the song and the associated music video as a result. Pinocchio P used his ability to draw in order to create essentially his own world within Vocaloid. If you look at some of his most popular songs during the 2010s, they're consistently bright, colorful, and vibrant. The purple rain dyes, the glitched out visuals, it's to the point for me that I can recognize a track by Pinocchio P just by seeing the thumbnail, even if I haven't even watched it before. And while sure it's true his music videos were consistent, this didn't mean they didn't have variety. Half the pleasure that came from his music was just seeing what direction his art will take next. 
Even Miku herself is never drawn the same way twice, despite his massive backlog. It's genuinely incredible. His writing as well always leans on this unique mixture of motifs, anthropology, and challenging the thoughts and beliefs of his audience. And what made Pinocchio P such an interesting writer was that he focused on writing his lyrics in a very direct manner, often writing from a second person point of view or displaying his songs as a conversation between himself and his audience. His work choice could be vague, but this is where the motifs came into play. He would create these unique concepts for his songs that would help explain the central idea of his piece, the theme. And what children are made of, for example, the motif here is a girl mentioned throughout the song. It's through her that Pinocchio P explores his main theme of loss of innocence. Now, to many of you, the idea of creativity being crushed by society and how we grow corrupt with age might seem overdone by now. But it might hit you on a personal level, for example, if an innocent child started directly pleading with you about not wanting to grow up and lose what's precious to them. It's through the story he tells of a child slowly falling apart that he's able to explore these philosophical ideas about childhood, but keeps his audience engaged by directly connecting to them with a relatable concept or idea. And in that sense, the audience will always have a general idea of what he wants to convey, no matter the word choice. But at the same time, he still rewards listeners who want to dive deeper into the lyrics. But despite all of this, I don't think this was enough to give Pinocchio P his lasting impact on Vocaloid. It's definitely enough to turn him into an icon, but not an empire. What I think ultimately pushed him a step above his contemporaries were his mascots Doste-chan and I mai na chan When talking to Sinra.net in 2014, he talked about the inspiration for Doste-chan came around the time he was transitioning from streaming into songwriting. His lack of experience with computers and writing love songs often left him with lingering questions, wondering how his songs reached the final states that they did. For Pinocchio P, there were many moments like this on his journey to the top, so Dose Chan was born from that theme or idea. For him, it was a character meant to use his razor sharp blade to cut deep into a matter of a question, or simply shave off questions that couldn't be answered. And once Dose Chan came into existence, he said he couldn't be satisfied if the art that he drew was just Miku, so he thought it would be nice to add some characters. I think one thing you have to give Pinocchio P credit for is that he's a master of public appearance. Dosei-chan and Ai Maina-chan are not only his mascots, but they have essentially become their own brand. From t-shirts to stickers online to even headphones. There was even a whole cafe dedicated to his music called Pinocchio Te in Tokyo a few years back. And when you put all of this together, you have this rare picture of a Vocaloid producer that's somehow become bigger than the scene they represent without ever even leaving it. But what I love about Pinocchio P is that he never let the fame go to his head. He's always been someone who tries to connect with his audience. I mean, the name Pinocchio P started as a joke from people making fun of how long he drew the nose in Hanauta. And while his most popular songs paint this picture of his music being chaotic, his closest fans will know that Pinocchio P is really an artist of many shapes. He's an artist that's capable of pulling off a dark piano ballad or even an ordinary love song. It's for this reason that I consider Pinocchio P to be one of the best producers out there in terms of music production. His range is extensive, from the retro 8-bit inspired Each of Us Have Our Own Life, to the funky bass line of Ultimate Senpai. Each song just seems to evoke his own personal mood by how detailed and lush they are. The way the censorship distorts into the instrumental and rotten heresy and chocolate is just downright diabolical. And it doesn't have to be that obvious either. It's those spoon taps that he adds during the Bridge of Mushroom Mother, for example, that helps paint that large drug aesthetic it has or the random animal noises in everything about animals. Those small details really help bring life into these tracks. You see, what separates an ordinary composer from a great one is that ability to add your own personal touch to your music. Are those airy tascates that seem to float in the background of slow motion necessary for that piece to work? No. But I can't tell you how many times I've found myself unconsciously saying it every time that song comes on. There are subtle details that he knows the audience will never thank him for, but at the end of the day makes his work stand out. And I think there's a sense of irony to all of this. Because while most artists who work within electronic music have no issues with staying anonymous or completely concealing the type of people they are off stage, here is this scene that also embraces anonymity for its creators, a safe haven for these people even, and you have one of the most influential electronic Vocaloid producers in history actively breaking every convention of his predecessors by constantly showing his dissatisfaction with not being able to show himself, or the kind of person he is and his music. And as I kept going through these albums, songs, and music videos writing this script, 
I just found myself absolutely mesmerized watching this one man drastically push boundaries in Vocaloid that no one thought was possible for a producer. There was something that Pinocchio P said that really struck a chord with me. He stated something along the lines that if he ever became the center of Vocaloid, it would be very unhealthy as a scene. That having someone like Rio or Deiko Nina was far healthier. And you know what? I can't help but agree with him. Truth be told, I think there's something terrifying about Pinocchio P. Here you had a man in just six short years would go from making simple generic Vocaloid songs to literally putting himself in his own tracks. While most producers packed up their bags and left when they wanted that kind of spotlight, this man essentially bent the world to meet his needs and succeeded. And that's a very scary thing to swallow, but also something that was desperately needed. Because people like Pinocchio P are the reason why boundaries get pushed. Was Sansaidaki even exist if Pinocchio P didn't succeed with Human? Will electronic music in the first place have gained any traction in Vocaloid without him? I don't know. But what I do know is that it would be impossible to know what Vocaloid would look like today without him. And for that reason, I can't thank him enough. Thanks for watching.